on 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 3, number 86. And here we were asked to roll two fair dice um, separately. And each die had six, six faces on it. So this is my pretty standard graphic of what I could get. And part A said, hey, can you write out the sample space? And just before we even go into part A, imagine if I was rolling two die and I wanted to just calculate the number of possible outcomes, we have that little multiplication rule, rule where I can think, well, if I rolled the first die, I would have six faces that could come up, right? And then the second die would also have six faces that could come up. So I would actually have 36 possible outcomes in my sample space. And it's always kind of nice to know how many outcomes you should have in your sample space, meaning when I write up this list over here, it should have 36 items in it. And you could use a tree diagram to do this, right? The first die roll would have six branches, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then it's going to get real crowded real fast because off of each of these branches, you would need six more, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then off of the two, one, two, three, four, five, six. And I, I can't even fit it all on here if I wanted to write this all out, right? It, it, and it's just too much. I'm not going to write it in a tree diagram. So let me just erase that. Only to say you could write it in a tree diagram if you wanted to. So I've got all of my outcomes here, right? I could roll a one and a one, then a one and a two, then a one and a three, so on and so forth. So there is my sample space. So when you roll two die, that's always your sample space. But part A gets more specific. They give us an event to take a look at. It says that you're going to roll either a three or a four at the first time out, followed by an even number. And, and I wrote that just right here. So if I'm going to roll a three or a four, let's narrow this down. If I'm going to roll a three or a four the first time out, that puts it... That puts me in one of these two rows. But it says follow that by an even number. Well, three followed by a two, that's rolling a three or a four, and then an even number, right? Three followed by a four, three four followed by a six. And then I've got these, these three options here. And that's what I put into my event space for A, right? So if I'm taking a look at this, let me erase what I have just so I don't leave it too junked up. But in terms of my event space for A, and I'm gonna do this as green, just so we have it, right? It's three, two, three, four, three, six, and then four, two, four, 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 six. And it also asks me to calculate the probability of A. Well, if I want the probability of any event, right, I have to have my numerator being the number of outcomes in event A, and then my denominator is always my sample space. So there were six outcomes in here, but there were 36 outcomes total. And that ratio is 6 divided by 36. And when I simplify that, I get 1 6. Okay. And then part C of this question says, hey, here's a new event. It's going to be the event that the sum of the two roles is at most 7. And I really want to unpack that phrase, at most. So when I say at most, right, it's up to you how your brain works. My brain personally works, I, I hear this as a less than or equal to. So I see this as the sum has to be less than or equal to seven. But some folks prefer it in words, which is great. So you could also write this as seven or fewer. That's what at most seven means. And it, it's kind of counterintuitive because you hear the word most and you might think more than, but it's actually less than or equal to. So if I want to start thinking about roles or the sum of two roles that are seven or fewer, let's just think about this first outcome here, right? If I look at one comma one, if I add these two outcomes together, right, one plus one is two, and that is less than or equal to seven, right? One plus two is three, that is less than or equal to seven. So as I start to go through this, I have to just figure out which ordered pairs give me sums that are less than or equal to seven. And, and one thing about writing up your sample, ooh, I erased that, I didn't want to. One thing about writing up your sample space like this is if you go across this diagonal, those are all of the outcomes where you're, the sum of the two die is exactly seven. So six, one, five, two, four, three, so on and so forth. So that diagonal always cuts that off if you write your sample space up this way. So I'm gonna color code this just so we have it. We used green last time, maybe I guess I'll use blue. So for all of the outcomes in B, it's gonna be everything on this diagonal, but and then I would say on the upside of it. So let me go ahead and start color coding in all of this. And it's gonna take a moment, but let me do it. Oops, that one did not belong, my bad. Hold up, JK, there we go. So there are the blue ones. And just taking a look at it, you can see there is some overlap, 
right? And there's some that are just blue, some that are just green, and some that are blue and green. But here we go. So here are all of my outcomes, my blue outcomes. And when you count that up, there are 21 of them. And I mention that because it asks me to calculate the probability of B. So I need the number of outcomes in B, which is 21, divided by my sample space, or the number of outcomes in my sample space, which is 36. And that simplifies to 7 twelfths. And you could give me a decimal version of that. That's, that's not a big deal. I, I don't care if you give me fraction or decimal. So part D says, explain what the probability of A given B represents, and then find that actual probability. So again, this expression, if you say this out loud, this is A given B, right? And whatever comes after that vertical bar has happened. And what that's trying to say here is you rolled two dice, and you already know one of those 21 outcomes happened. That, that is a given. And then if you know you rolled two die and you have one of these 21 outcomes, how many of them are also in A? So what that's saying when I say in the context of this problem, we're asked to find the probability of rolling a three or a four on the first die followed by an even number, given that the sum of the two rolls is at most seven, right? So given that this has happened, how many of those 21 outcomes had a roll of a three or a four? on the first die and then an even number on the second die. All right, now formulaically, what we wanna do is if we look at that, that conditional formula, it's formula two on your formula sheet, we call it, this is regularly referred to as the multiplication rule. Let me write that out. Even though it says division, or we look at it with division, but we want the probability of A and B over the probability of B. Okay, so let's let's piece this together, all right? Because I know this is, and I'm going to erase some of the stuff I have here because it's it's a little junked up, and I don't want to be too junked up. Okay, so let's talk about what we have here. So what I want to do is I want to look at the denominator, right? That's the probability of B. We literally, we found that over here. So I know my denominator is going to be 7 twelfths. Now, to get the numerator, right, and I'm going to color code this differently. If I want A and B, anytime you hear the word and, right, and I'm gonna put this over here, you're looking for overlap. So let's go back to our sample space and look at where our blue event and our green event overlapped. And we had overlap here at three, two, four, two, and three, four. So I just want you to hear there are three outcomes where both A and B were happening, right? So if we wanted to, again, look at these two lists, where did they overlap? They overlapped at three, two, three, four, and four, two. There were only three outcomes they had in common. So this numerator here, this purple numerator, right? You see this here, it is three out of 36, right? And we're gonna put that in ratio to our blue denominator of 21 out of 36. And then when we perform all of that algebra, we find out that that ratio is one seventh. All right, now part E is saying, are these events mutually exclusive? Well, whenever you wanna check that events are mutually exclusive, we're gonna look at that fifth formula. Oops, let me write this again. And say, hey, is the probability of A and B equal to zero? And I'm gonna put a little question mark over that. Well, we just found the purple one, right? And again, I'm gonna color code this. So what was the probability of A and B? Well, we found it up here. It was three out of 36. And three out of 36 is not equal to zero, so the answer here is no, they are not mutually exclusive. And if we just take a step back, mutually exclusive means that they have no outcomes in common. Well, they did, they had three outcomes in common. So it's possible to roll two dice and have an outcome that is both in A and in B, right? So I, I rolled a three and then an even number, and that sum is collectively less than seven. All right, part F asks, are these events independent? And you have two formulas you can use for independence or to check independence. I opted to use the AND formula here. It's, it's the one I happen to prefer, but this is formula three. So you see me looking, okay, are these two sides of the equation equal? Well, let's go figure this out. So again, the left side is the purple probability. So there's three out of 36, right? And if I look at the right side of the equation, we had the green probability oops, let me color code this here, the green probability and the blue probability that we, we already calculated previously in this problem. So I plug those in, I see that, hey, equality did not hold. So my answer here is really that they're not independent, right? So if you get, let me write not independent. If equality doesn't hold, then your answer to this question is no, they're not independent. If equality did hold, you would say they were independent. All right, so I know that's a lot, but there is number 86. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye.